The goal of this project is to create an informed interpretation of the first movement of Franz Schubert's Piano Sonata in A minor, D845. This interpretation is created through understanding and combining the perspectives of various fields of music scholarship with the impacts of D845's original instrumentation, a model of forte piano, on the character and style of the piece. Schubert likely composed D845 on a forte piano like the graph. The forte piano sustains pitches for shorter durations than the modern Steinway piano. A result of this is a more articulate sound. Performers must take this quality into account when performing a piece because the shape or contour of every note, gesture, motive, or phrase is going to be continuous in a different way than what many modern pianists are accustomed to. From the lowest to the highest pitch on the instrument, and from the lowest to highest dynamic level, a performer with the medium of the forte piano has idiomatic access to a distinct variety of potential tone colors. This particular ability of the historical instrument contrasts the homogeneity of the modern piano's timbre across pitch and dynamic ranges. Because D845 was written for these historical instruments, the forte piano helps the pianist to identify characteristics of sections within the work. This is said with the consideration that the notation in the score was written for instruments with the previously specified sound qualities, which inherently alter how one can aesthetically and stylistically realize the score. Understanding the forte piano's sound capabilities reveals what Schubert could have possibly heard for the character and helps show pianists how they can interpret works. In combination with an understanding of the forte piano's impact on the character of Schubert's D845, the fields of music history, music theory, and performance practice were studied to aid in the development of an interpretation. Overall, Schubert contrasts typical functions of form to mislead the listener. His use of form is aided by the alternative key scheme of the piece, where there are unexpected harmonic incidents, such as the primary theme's F-sharp minor quality at the beginning of the recapitulation, when the return of A minor is expected. Many of the unanticipated key areas and harmonies are approached through chromaticism. This specific type of chromaticism involves Schubert moving a half step away from a chord, often one with tendency tones, and building a chord on top of that falling note. Schubert's writing in D845 explores distinct styles, including orchestral, vocal, and dance. A part of this piece's beauty is in the way that Schubert seamlessly and frequently transitions among these varied styles without much preparation. Specific colors in each of these stylistic areas are created through the influences of key area, as well as specific uses of articulation and rhythm. This movement recycles rhythms. Consider the rhythm in measures 26 through 33 and measures 86 through 89, for example. Here, the rhythms are identical, but the type of articulations used have a drastic impact on the character of the section. The treatment of harmony, rhythm, articulation, and styles in D845 are treated in a similar manner throughout the movement in order to create a cohesive musical scheme specific to the work. The primary theme that opens the movement is in a vocal style. Schubert's piano sonatas are considered to be classical, and studying the classical era performance practice leads the performer to understand that this slur was long for the style. This leads to the reasonable conclusion that the line can be prolonged and played particularly legato. When performed on the forte piano, the duration of notes in this theme alter the tempo at which the section can be played if the legato sound is to be maintained. On the modern piano, one can perform this section with finger legato and at a tempo that combines two tempi. One, faster tempo required to make a legato line on the forte piano, and two, the slower one of the piano. 
Here's a clip of the opening measures played on the forte piano that demonstrate the historical instrument's sound quality and a potential tempo these measures can be played at on the instrument. Measures 7 through 9 contain chords in both hands that move in contrary motion. The forte piano makes this moment especially dramatic because it emphasizes the contrary motion through timbre as the gap between the right and left hands widens. The severity of the diminished chord in measure 8 and the Italian augmented 6th chord in measure 9 is strengthened because of the historical instrument's timbre as well. To express the drama of these chords, a modern pianist can voice the bass line as the chords separate from one another to reinforce the pitch gap and the natural difference in tone color between the high and low ranges of the instrument. The music in measure 20 through 26 are orchestral, and the forte piano's range of tone colors helps to convey the variety of sounds in an orchestra. This section ends on an E major chord, the dominant chord of the key area, resulting in an elided cadence that demands intensity in a performer's playing. While the forte piano accentuates the variety in tone color between the higher and lower groups of chords, modern pianists can play the forward sondo markings in these groups with agogic accents. In measures 25 through 39, the articulate ability of the forte piano helps make the music more pronounced, militaristic, percussive, and orchestral. There is a 5 to 1 motion between segments of music, as is found between measures 25 and 26, as well as between 29 and 30. But the music at the end of measure 33 ends unexpectedly with a B major chord. The music from 34 to 39 is chromatic, and the chromatic harmonies in measures 36 through 37 emphatically expand outward, a motion that is dramatized by the widening tone color of the forte piano. Here, the music ends with a half cadence, creating a demand for the following section of music to be in C major. On the modern piano, I chose to keep all the staccato articulations pronounced, especially those of the chords in measures 27, 29, and 33, to ensure that the articulation's contribution to the militaristic character is not compromised by the piano's fuller sound. The secondary theme is dance-like. Schubert writes using Landler rhythm, which is a type of dance rhythm. 
He leads us through multiple key areas that are unexpected, creating a fragmented but long line comparable to a long sentence composed of many clauses. One measure slur markings are written in this thematic area. A pianist can play these slurs heavier and longer at the beginning and shorter and lighter as the music progresses beneath the slur. This approach applies to measures 41, 51, and 55. There are exceptions to this approach, though, depending on the character or direction of certain measures of music. Measure 42, for example, can benefit from a more straightforward approach because of where it leads. Within the secondary theme, the slur gesture in measures 51 and 55 has a tapered shape. It can be played as shorter slurs are interpreted in the classical era, where they are heavier and longer at the beginning, followed by the progressively shorter and lighter notes. The forte piano's ability to decay more quickly than the modern piano allows this gesture to be more acutely shaped, where it tapers more rapidly. Modern pianos can effectively shape this idea but the time should be stretched less at the gesture's beginning than when it is performed on the forte piano. Too much timing adjustment in this spot is not appropriate on the modern piano, because doing so is much more aesthetic when combined with the idiomatic decay of the forte piano. If this is done on the modern piano, the phrase could be broken. The secondary thematic area ends ambiguously. Here, measure 59 speaks in fortissimo and is followed by a suspenseful measure of rest that ultimately leads to a piano mezzo staccato idea ending in the dominant of C major. This enigmatic ending is ambiguous, but it does not prepare the listener for the key of C minor that follows in measure 64. C minor, the parallel minor of C major, develop C major harmonically, further obscuring the home key of A minor. Because the section is pianissimo, and in the vocal texture of the opening, it naturally contrasts the previous section that is reminiscent of a dance. Performers can emphasize the sudden shift in style by taking the tempo somewhat slower, and by emphasizing the legato effect of the slurs by playing with finger legato. When performed on the forte piano, the exposition's closing material in measures 77 through 81 naturally expresses the delicate dance-like character of the area implied by the pianissimo. Although this recycled material is militaristic when originally found in measures 26 through 35, the intervals between pitches in measures like 77 are smaller, making them sound less severe. Both the staccato and pianissimo markings are naturally expressed in the forte piano, and a modern pianist can use the una corda pedal and play the staccatos delicately and minimize their sustain as much as possible in order to convey the gentle dance character. Further on in the closing material, in measures 86 through 89, the and of beat two has an accent. The forte piano's natural decay rapidly resolves these small explosions of energy, making space for the delicate staccato idea to present itself in the following beat. Modern pianists can continue their use of the unicorda pedal from the previous measures and play these accented notes with an agogic accent.
Beginning in the development at measure 120, a texture unique to the rest of the movement appears in pianissimo. The music spans a range of octaves and tone colors, especially through the left hand's melodic line and the right hand's outbursts in measures 127, 128, and 130, and 131. Dunn's 16th notes make up the texture in the right hand, which are easily voiced beneath the melodic line because of the forte piano's natural decay and distinct timbres. Modern pianists should consider performing this section with the una quarter pedal depressed and must play these 16th notes without excessive pedaling. When the primary theme reemerges following the somewhat stormy development, it enters in a foreign key area. The character here seems to have wound up lost in the key of F sharp minor, where the music should have returned to the home key of A minor instead. Sonata forms typically reserve the experience of being lost for the development section, and this moment contrasts the typical function of the recapitulation by creating an overlap between the functions of the developmental and recapitulatory areas of sonata form. Naturally, the forte piano's variety of tone colors amplifies the distinction between the imitative voices, beginning in measure 146, where this distinction between voices contributes to the questioning, unsteady pace of the character at this point in the musical narrative. The lost character of this section can be conveyed appropriately on the modern piano despite the instrument's more homogeneous tone quality among registers through the use of the una corta pedal and rubato that differentiates the inflections of each imitation from the initial imitated statement. The first time we hear the closing material in the exposition, the primary theme is in the foreign key of C minor, while the relative major returns in measure 77. However, the closing material in the recapitulation is harmonically backward from that in the exposition. The development of the primary theme in measure 224 is in the key of A minor, and is appropriately preceded by an E dominant seventh chord. The following idea in measure 237, however, is in an entirely out of place key area, F major. F major forces its way into this A minor tapestry chromatically from the E major chord, the dominant of A minor, in measure 236. It is shocking that we enter the key area built on the sixth of A minor instead of that key itself but this anomaly foreshadows the F major harmony that inserts itself as a detour in measure 264 of the coda. The forte piano naturally accentuates a palette of tone colors that contribute to the orchestral character of the coda, making the voicing of the heavy music here natural. In order to bring out more colors in this orchestral section, modern pianists can create depth of sound by voicing the bass line to bring more color to the homogeneous sound of the instrument. Areas where this approach is appropriate include measures 262 through 270, 283 to 294, 295 through 302, and 303 through 311. Now, here is my performance of Schubert's Piano Sonata in A minor, D845, movement one.